Well, as you've heard in the previous two presentations, the CLC has been working towards trying to operationalize uh, 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 the environmental principles document to move forward on uh, the ability of the lake committees to achieve fish community goals and objectives. And so the Lake Erie Committee has been kind of the guinea pig on running out with some of this stuff. We got it uh, placed in our lap because we have such a robust group of working individuals that have a lot of working knowledge that are organized into the habitat task group. So I'm going to go through uh, a little background information, talk about our first stab at trying to build that kind of guidance up into uh, uh, a tactical type plan that then we can share with other folks, including internal and external folks, relative to uh, moving forward on achieving uh, the fish community goals and objectives present very briefly some results I got a lot of feedback from the from the folks on the habitat task group that I haven't had a chance to summarize yet but I think it's going to be extremely valuable moving forward and then talk about some of the next steps that we intend to take uh, you probably you've seen this slide before probably two or three times but this is uh, the premise of the environmental principles is that sustainable fisheries can occur across basins if we um, if functional habitats are protected and improved in each lake through a systematic, adaptive, cumulative, collaborative approach that accommodates fishery value and decisions to act on manageable anthropogenic uh, stresses. So that's pretty high level, but uh, ultimately we need to break that high level down into something that we can provide to these applicators, whether they be folks on the landscape doing stuff or funding organizations. Uh, many of us in here are um, charged with uh, uh, evaluating projects for funding as we move forward and a lot of times as I'm sitting in in those uh, in those review committees I, I'm examining a lot of pro projects that I don't feel specifically address us achieving fish community goals and objectives and those those are the projects those those are where the authorities come from so having a document like that uh, like this that provides that uh, mid-level guidance uh, I think will be extremely valuable not only for me but I'm sure for a lot of the other funding agencies as well um, really what needs to be done here <clears throat> we've got a series of long-term objectives and strategies out there but we need to really work on developing some short-term priorities or short-term targets and actions um, what can we do where where is it important and why and then start moving forward on these over the short term. So the next five to 10 years, uh, move through the implementation, then work into the, uh, or actually develop the working hypotheses, and then start uh, adaptively looking at how we're doing things on the landscape and whether we're affecting change and achievement of those fish community goals and objectives. So really, why has this been so difficult? And I think John's covered it, Brian covered it, but I'm gonna hammer it home again because I've been involved in this for a long time. But we've got lots of really good strategic guidance out there. Um, we've got the Lake Erie Fish Community Objectives. We've got the Lake Erie Environmental Objectives, and these are very, very good documents put together by folks that, that were well engaged in the, in, in the process, in the system. Um, but there's lots of words in there that are really difficult to take and do something with. Um, I think sustainable and promote were uh, mentioned 16 times in the fish community objectives. And that's great, but what is sustainable and how do you promote? Environmental objectives, recognize, anticipate, promote. So we've got these strategic documents out there. We've got lots of operational knowledge on the ground, but we need to marry those two. So the operational ideas, multiple scales from site-specific to regional, I hear folks talking about things um, at those scales, multiple species impacts. So I've got a picture of the, the harmful algal bloom that affected, what, 3 million acres of Lake Erie back in 2011. That's a large scale impact all the way down to, you know, hey, this gravel cobble spawning stretch here is impaired because of a, 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 a dam or what have you. So you go from large scale down to small scale. And Brian also identified lots of unknowns, but I think we can use this exercise to move us through developing some priorities relative to those unknowns as well. And then that lack of linkage from the operational back to the strategic, and that's kind of what I view the environmental principles document itself and the direction that we're heading is developing this tactical guidance. Um, something that, that, and again, outside of the fisheries agency's regulatory authority, we don't pull the levers on a lot of these things. Uh, like Brian mentioned, Eric's going to talk about a, a few projects in Lake Erie that, 
that we've had our fingers in, but a lot of times they're administered outside, and I have a lot of external folks. Our Office of Coastal Management comes up to me on a regular basis and said, hey, Jeff, what, what do I need to do so you can meet your objectives? And oftentimes, I can't tell them. So we really, the environmental principles hopefully uh, document itself will help bridge this gap between strategic, strategic and operational aspects of achievement of the fish community objectives, be tactical in, in nature, and then allow for us to pass it off to other folks, whether they be regulatory, whether they be NGO or, or uh, uh, funding agencies. And again, um, uh, just back to the why is it so difficult, the, the Lake Erie environmental objectives did identify a number of Lake, uh, Lake Erie priority management areas. I don't remember how many there are, but uh, there's nothing in there that says why are these priority management areas. What species, stocks, functional habitats, and components uh, are impaired there or important, and what needs to happen? Those were developed based on criteria that are built into the environmental principles, uh, but they weren't captured there. So. Um, these were identified because they support key species that we care about. They're repeatable in space and time. Uh, there's options for affecting fish production in these locations, and they're spatially definable. And, and as I move through uh, kind of the implementation side of things, you'll see where we ran into some challenges with that. So next, I wanted to talk about our attempt to uh, <clears throat> implement the environmental, uh, environmental principles. and. Uh, we were tasked with providing some guidance to the uh, uh, Habitat Task Group to give us some on-the-ground operational input uh, using our existing fish community objectives and environmental objectives as kind of the benchmarks. Uh, we asked them to identify functional habitats and kind of assess the conditions of those, identify any impediments and actions, and, and, and the more impediments and actions they identify, the easier it's going to be for us to build that back up into that tactical guidance, I think, within these uh, priority management areas. So there's the technical committee. Um, unfortunately, they didn't get this guidance until very late in the game, and they, they've done a noble, noble job of really crushing through some stuff in the past month, month and a half to get us some initial feedback on how this might work out. And then it gets down to uh, a process for evaluating uh, each of, of, of the pieces of information that the, uh, the Habitat Task Group has provided to provide a prioritized short-term list of targets and actions to inform and collaborate with other applicators. And that's going to be our, our uh, elephant in the room to wrestle with is taking this guidance together, putting it into uh, uh, a fashion that we can then pass off to other folks, and we'll rely pretty heavily on the technical folks for helping us out there. And in, in the process of this, we'll be working on these working hypotheses that Brian referenced earlier. So like I said, uh, the Habitat Task Group received some guidance very late in the game, uh, winter of uh, 2016, and I think the explicit guidance was at the task group meeting, which was in February. So. Uh, they got dumped on quite a bit in the midst of all the other Lake Committee responsibilities that they were administering. Um, and we asked them to rely on their own internal expertise. Uh, it's a broad group of folks with a lot of experience and, and a lot of knowledge and rely on the strategic documents, but kind of narrow it in to focus on the production side a little more than other aspects associated with developing uh, priority management areas and functional habitats. That was an attempt to make it a little simpler to get some product out. Um, and then also to drill down to life stage specific impediments and identify actions, but uh, also capture those unknowns because those are, I think, going to be important in helping us to guide resources towards answering unknowns that'll help us move forward on the adaptive management process. We've got a lot of swags in the results, and, and I'm okay with that. I, I think that's actually very encouraging. Um, and, and I'll get into kind of how we did this uh, here in a minute, but we asked them to compile specific functional habitats in priority management areas for species of, of uh, concern uh, relative to the fish community objectives, and then uh, identify their certainty around those impediments as well as possible actions. And the, the, the process that we used was kind of founded in some of the Habitat Suitability Index work to get us down to a level a highly detailed level, I guess, that there was some literature, literature support for, but then we could build back up into that talk, tactical uh, guidance. And, and the other piece that, that I requested was to work at the jurisdictional level so that folks 
that knew the most about what was going on were identifying high priority actions within functional habitats and priority management areas rather than than relying on broader expertise across the basin. And again, you've already seen this, this graphic, but this is kind of the drilling down a little further, um, trying to understand specific impediments associated with uh, each one of these components of the uh, uh, circle that we've got up here, the life, life history cycle that we've got up here. And we broke down uh, our, our uh, request into those levels, and I'll show you kind of how we did it. I, this is a, just an example of the Sandusky River system. Um, obviously, there's a fairly significant dam there that's been identified over the past. It's identified as a priority management area because it supports a, a key species in Lake Erie, walleye in particular, that has uh, demonstrated stock formation, annual spawning events running up there, but the, the stock itself is degraded because of lack of access to spawning habitat. Um, there are some options for uh, affecting fish production here. Fish recruitment may be improved by removing this large dam and softening shorelines, restoring wetlands within the primer, uh, priority management area, and it's spatially definable. So the Sandusky River proper, Sandusky Bay, Plume, we can draw a circle around that. Applicators love that. Tell me where to work and what I need to do. So that kind of gives you a little background on, on the guidance that we provided. And here's, here's some of the initial results that was provided by the, the Habitat Task Group. Initially, and this is a real quick scan, um, I was reading size two font, I think, whenever I was trying to pull this stuff out, because <laughs> our spreadsheet's kind of unwieldy. But uh, 14 priority management area functional habitat uni uh, units were identified as highly impaired, or highly or or just impaired, had impaired components. And I didn't look across those functional habitat units or priority management areas, but I know there's some commonalities there. So our, our list of 14 likely is going to start to, to wheel down into something, something more specific that we can deal with. The priority management areas range from the Detroit River down to the Cattaraugus Creek. But most of them were spatially definable and included species uh, or, or uh, functional habitat for species such as walleye, sturgeon, musky, northern pike, smallmouth bass, cisco, and lake trout, everything that's identified in the fish community objectives. So there'll be more to come from this. I think we've got a real good stab at the initial guidance. Um, there's lots of information to come in, and then I think lots of work to do at the, at the lake committee level to, uh, along with the task group, to kind of build this up into the, the level of guidance that external folks are going to need. Uh, this slide right here just shows what the spreadsheet kind of looked like, a snapshot of it. What we did was build a spreadsheet uh, for the task group to populate the constrained answers. Um, and that was more selfish on the late committee part because we were hoping to be able to constrain those answers down enough that we could make some sense out of them. But it also was very difficult for, for uh, um, the task group as well because everybody says, or I had a lot of folks that said, hey, you know, the impediment, the action, this, that, and the other was not on the spreadsheet, and I couldn't enter it myself. That was by design, but I think we can go back and do some revisions. Um, next, I think uh, it was identified by a number of folks that, that this uh, exercise itself, or at least the format of trying to collect the information, was well suited to stocks with lots of place-based information, like tributary spawning stocks, etc. That's by intent. That links back up to the principles that, that we had developed. And I recognize the challenges associated with that, but that also means that we've identified some information gaps. So uh, uh, it's less suited to general stocks or less understood stocks. Um, but I, like I said, I think we can identify information gaps and guide some dollars to help us answer that. So lastly, I'll get into some next steps here. We're going to refine this collection tool. I think we need to. Um, we've got a lot of good input back from the Habitat Task Group, and I think we've got a good start on building that tactical guidance. Um, but we also, I think, need to refine it, make sure we're not missing some things that we could pull back in to, to help us build, build the, that tactical guidance. Uh, and then the, the Lake Committee itself is, is going to have to develop some strategy for prioritizing actions for consideration in the future. And uh, those, those actions will include uh, status and severity of the uh, impediments, certainty and severi of the severity assessment, 
expected outcomes from the action, certainty of achieving the expected outcome, and time needed for a response, benefits to multiple stock species across PMAs, priority management areas, and functional habitats. So um, I guess back up to the collection tool, one of the, one of the pieces of information that are pieces of feedback that I got was from folks that, that said that they really appreciated the certainty component. So, and we use that to evaluate which we had some certainty on, where that went into, or I did, uh, into a research pile or an action pile. And, and so I would encourage as folks move forward with trying to implement uh, the environmental principles at the individual lake committee level that you consider including your experts assessment of certainty in, in, in not only impediments but also actions. And then uh, ultimately we'll hopefully develop uh, some criteria in a ranking scheme and, and whittle the list down to, to five, six, a short list of priority actions over the next five years that we can then provide out as well as provide for additional uh, uh, funding mechanisms. And again, I just wanted to circle back to this adaptive management approach, uh, developing the working hypotheses. Once we get this priority list down, I think we'll also be working with the task group to develop these working hypotheses, which then can be developed into some additional research priorities for us moving forward as well to test whether we think these things are, are actually doing what we intend to do. So that's a little bit outside of the moving it out to the applicators. That's something that would be internal. but. But being able to, to demonstrate, and I think Eric will probably talk about some of the research that, that demonstrates the impacts of, or, or some of the research around uh, the effectiveness of our actions on the landscape. And again, uh, just to circle back to, to, to the send out, we're going to build this tactical guidance and then um, through the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and the CLC, we'll uh, develop a strategy for communicating these out to individual applicators and there's a whole list of applicators over here so that'll fall back to the Lake Committee folks to make sure that we've pushed these priorities out we've developed them full enough so that all of that list of individuals can can grab onto a piece of it and help us out and then we can work on the back side of it with the working hypotheses so our, our timetable right now is to complete the input and, and tables by the summer of 2016 with some revision uh, based on the feedback that we've received so far to compile this list of actions needed for each priority management area for i consider 20 years sort of long term um, and then identify five top priority actions from some criteria that we, we develop, and I don't think it's gonna be as difficult as I initially had thought it was gonna be, uh, and then to develop the working hypotheses for the top priority actions, determine the potential benefits to the fishery, so tying it back to that value that external folks can use to build into justification, and then identify these short-term actions, uh, targets, actions, and research needs and then we'll communicate that with the applicators in 2016. So with that, I appreciate your attention and I am open for questions.